All right, so if you've been around my channel for a little bit, you probably remember my video about the empty standby list. Um, I've had people coming to my Discord uh, like crazy with air quotes. There's been at least like 10 or something asking for the standby list. And I figured because that website is down, I would offer you two alternatives really quick that you could use in place of that standby list or just another source to get it essentially. So number one, I do have the empty standby list posted in my Discord. It's in Tech Talk. You'll see somebody else reposted it. A uh, very Chad guy who did that. Shout out to you. Otherwise, there is another program you could use called Intelligent Standby List Cleaner. Uh, and I'm going to pull it up for you right now. And the only reason I don't have it is because I'm stupid and didn't prepare beforehand for this recording. So here it is. This is the official page right here for the download for ISLC. Uh, you should be able to download it using this link right here. And when you get that, you'll have a EXE. But open it up. I'll take you through that real quick. Go to your downloads, where it is. And as you can see, I have it right here. And then you want to extract it using 7-Zip. If you don't want to use 7-Zip, it's really simple. You just download the program and you should be able to do this. Um, but once you zip, unzip it, you should get this right here, which is the folder for Intelligent Standby List Cleaner. And this right here is the application that you're going to want to launch. So I'm going to open that up real quick. Make sure you give it admin perms, and then you'll be hit with this window right here. Uh, this is in literally an alternative to standby list cleaner. It does exactly the same thing that standby list cleaner does, uh, except it has a little bit more functionality to it if that's what you were looking for in the program. For example, if you wanted this to only run when you're above a certain amount of RAM usage, you can do that using these two numbers here. You can set these to whatever you want. There's some people who recommend that you should set them to be like 50-50. So for example, uh, the list size is at least, say if I had 16 gigs, set it to around 8,000. And then when free memory is lower than 8,000, but if you want this task to run less on your computer and really only when you're in heavy gaming or like a bunch of workloads, um, then you can set it to be something like I had before where it's like 14,000 megabytes and then setting this to free memory is lower than 2,000. That way it will only clear out that standby memory list when you're at less than 2,000 megabytes. And then secondarily, I would recommend making sure that if you're actually going to use this program, check start iOS. LC, I can't speak, uh, minimize and auto start monitoring. That'll just launch it when your computer launches. Uh, and then also this one too, that's what both of those do as well. It throws it into the task scheduler. And if you remember task scheduler is actually where we put the empty standby list before. And here it is, you can see empty standby list is ready to go right up there because I have that running. But regardless, once you have that set up the way you want, uh, there is this also a uh, custom timer resolution. Um, there is some conflicting stuff about this. I tried to look up as much as I can regarding this, but people seem to just blurt out whichever number they feel like for this. So my recommendation would be if you really want to use this, set it to 0.5 and try it out. If anything acts funky, set it back to default. Default is normally one millisecond. Uh, so keep that in mind. Mainly the benefit to doing this is just you're getting slightly quicker response times because it basically shortens the window of the CPU's responsiveness. So if this does benefit you, then sure, it's set to 0.5, go for it, go crazy. Um, but some people don't even notice any difference with it on at 0.5 or just at default. So you can test it and then just find whatever works for you. And then whenever you have the timer resolution set the way you want, you can check enable custom timer resolution. The final thing is before you hit the start button here, make sure you change this polling rate to something that works for you. This is essentially just sets how often the ISLC will check for uh, these parameters over here. Um, so you could set this. Most users want to set it between 500 and 1,000. You don't really need it any quicker, and you probably don't need it any slower either. Uh, but again, that's all personal preference, so uh, see whatever works for you. And with that, that's just a couple of quick alternatives. Uh, you know, I tend to try to make these videos as short and quick to the point as possible. Uh, so if you do have any questions, feel free to either leave them down below or ask me in the Discord. Um, I'm pretty responsive in the Discord, so if you have any questions, me or somebody else in the Discord can help you out because we got a pretty decent community there now. Just a quick addition at the end here, I just want to let you guys know, make sure you get other opinions on this too. There are a bunch of videos on YouTube regarding ISLC, so if you need additional information, which I'd highly recommend, look at other people's YouTube videos, look it up online, 
and decide what works best for you. Obviously, like I always try to advocate for, don't just trust me. But uh, anyway, let me finish up this video. Yeah, I want to thank you guys for the support while I've been uh, on Exodus uh, for 40 days in the desert. And uh, I appreciate you guys. And there'll be more content to come soon once I actually get the time to make it. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys have a fantastic day. Uh, this is Clem. Locking out. Later. Oh, and I was told to tell you to subscribe. So if you're not subscribed, you should subscribe. Um, or else people are going to be angry at me. Yeah. Later.